Math 31, welcome to example five. So in these next two examples, what we're going to do is instead of me giving you the equation of ellipse, of an ellipse, excuse me, and you listing off a bunch of traits, I'm going to give you some of the traits and I want you to get me back to the equation of the ellipse. Now our general form for the equation of the ellipse, just to remind you, is x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to one. And admittedly, depending on where a is, a might be under the x variable or it could be under the, the y variable. So this technically could be b squared and this could be a squared, but I just want you to see that this is the general form. So ultimately, when I'm asking you to write the equation of an ellipse, you need to make sure you know the center and that you know A and B. If you have those three pieces of information, so the center, A and B, then you could write me the equation of the ellipse. So I'm gonna give you a few of these traits, all right, and from that we're gonna try and pick apart what goes on the center, the HK, what is A equal to, and then I'll write A squared under, well, again, A squared might be under the X variable, it might be under the um, Y variable, so let me just write it this way, the other option just in case it's not clear with what I'm saying, is that it could be x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared is equal to one. So that's the other version. Again, a is always the larger number, and I don't know just yet if a is gonna come underneath the x or y variable. So with that, let's start trying to figure out what we have here. It says write the equation of an ellipse having a center at three five, a vertex at three eleven, and one of the foci at three, five plus four root two. Okay, so first of all, right there, right out the gate, I hear my center, right? There's my center at hk. So I know I'm gonna have an x minus three squared and a y minus five squared. And again, I still don't know where the a is, if it's under the x or y variable, but I've gotten a good chunk of what I need. I've got the center. And it's helpful for me to sketch a picture of what's going on here. So let me go ahead and draw a little x, y axis, and then let's just see what information was given to us, and then what we can glean from there. All right, so it says my center is at three, five, so let me go put that in here. So let's say this is three, five. We'll say that's the center. I'm also given this piece of information that at three, 11, let me put this was a five, this was a three, but at 311, I have a vertex. All right, now if I have an ellipse and this is a vertex, I know I'm looking at a vertical ellipse. All right, and whenever you talk about going from a center to a vertex, that's a distance of A units. And we can see here that in order to go from 35 to 311, it's my Y coordinate that changed, all right? And if my Y coordinate's changing, that's great to keep that in mind, but I can also see that A is six because 11 minus five is six. So at this point, I know I'm looking at this version of the ellipse, right? So I'm actually gonna erase this out, all right, so that we can narrow this down. So let me show you where we are, all right? I can see that I have a vertical ellipse, so I know A squared is going to be under the y variable. I'm gonna erase this other option because it wasn't something that wound up being the case, okay? All right, and if we start to pick this apart, let's go a little bit further. So now I know that we have x minus five squared, oops, excuse me, x minus three, if I look at the x coordinate. I have x minus three squared. I don't know what b squared is yet. I have y minus five squared but I do know what a is equal to, so a squared has got to be 36, and that's going to be equal to one. So I'm, I'm a good chunk of the way through this problem. I figured out the vertex, excuse me, I figured out the center, and I figured out a. All right, so we know that the distance from the center to the vertex is a. The other piece of information I haven't used yet is this focus. So three plus four root two or excuse me, three comma five plus four root two. Well, here's three five. And if I wanna add four root two to that Y coordinate, well, let's just get some gut feelings or not really gut feelings. Let's get a decimal approximation for what four root two is equal to. 
and it looks like it's at about 5.7. All right, so keeping in mind that A is six, right, this focus is really close to it here at three, five, right, plus four root two. So this is the order pair, right, three, five, and then I have to add to it four root two. So there's the focus. And we know that the distance from your center to your focus is C. So at this point, let's just see what we have here. I know A is six, and I know C is four root two. And if you have A and you have C, you can get to B squared. All right, so let's, let me divide this out and then give myself just a little bit of working room there. I know that C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. All right, well, C squared, if I take four root two and I square it, maybe you can see it's the number 32, maybe you can't, but let me write this out for right now. If I have four root two squared, that's gonna be equal to six squared minus B squared. All right, well, four root two, if I square this number, it's 32. And why I was saying maybe you could see that it's 16, that's because four, I'm sorry, maybe you can see that four root two squared is 32. That's because four squared is 16, the square root of two squared is two, and 16 times two is 32. All right, so let me, let me point to what, what I'm talking about. If you can distribute this exponent into this parentheses because the four and the root two are being multiplied. You can distribute exponents over multiplication. So four squared is 16, the square root of two squared is two, and 16 times two is 32. And if you don't like any of that, if you're like, um, hard pass on that, then just plug it into your calculator. So we'll get that 32 is equal to 36 minus b squared. If I manipulate this a little bit, I'm gonna get that b squared is equal to four. And you might say, well, sure, I'll square root it and find out that b is equal to two. And you could even start to draw in all of your ellipse at that point, but you don't need to, because ultimately you were just being asked to find the equation of this ellipse. So now I know x minus three squared over b squared, which is four, plus y minus five squared over 36 is equal to one. And here it is, there's my answer. All right, I'll make sure I put a little therefore. Right. And that is the answer to this equation or this example. I have found the equation of an ellipse. Sure enough, it does have a center at 3, 5. Because A is 6, it would have a vertex at 3, 11. Just if we're keeping in, in line with what we've done before, it would also have a vertex at 3, negative 1, because if I subtracted 6 from this y coordinate, I'd be down here at negative 1. I have a focus at 3, 5 plus 4 root 2. And just so we're Again, staying consistent with what we did before. I have a focus at three, five minus four root two. All right, so there'd be another focus and then a vertex down here. And because I found the B value, I could also go get the co-vertices or the intercepts um, as some folks call them. All right, so with that, we've, we've done our first of what I refer to as the backwards problems. So the backwards problems are where I give you some traits and ask you to get the equation of an ellipse. We're gonna try that again in example six. So I will see you in just a little bit. Thanks so much. Bye.